All right. Wow, did I go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> really bad. A really, really bad rabbit hole. First of all, there's a huge rabbit hole in DIY synthesizers. So there's a huge... I'm way late for the party, right? There's a huge, huge um, bunch of people online who are, are building DIY amps, kind of in Euro racks, and everybody's building a plug-in, everybody and their brother. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really late to the party. Um, but uh, I did get really quite fascinated with the filter. Um, so at first, that ladder filter didn't seem to make any sense. So um, let's talk about low-pass filter. So uh, the top here is a very simple low-pass filter. It's an R and a C, and it's, it's a roll-off filter. Now, if you wanted to roll off sharper, you can cascade them. So you put a bunch together and it will roll off faster. You're going to lose a lot of energy in that. And um, they'll kind of crosstalk with one another. So analysis of it, it's kind of more complicated. So a lot of times what you'll see is at the bottom there, you'll see a low pass and then a buffer, a low pass and then a buffer, and then a low pass. So you'll, you'll, you'll separate them, right? Um, so the... Um, the Moog filter is basically using those diodes or, or, or transistors to separate the different sections, to isolate them so they don't talk to one another. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Um, now, the idea that there's pairs, that is a bit more complicated. So if you go into YouTube and search for Moog filter Georgia Tech, there's a great professor who teaches you all about this filter, so go watch that video. But here's some of the ideas that he can, that he gets across in this video. One is that if you imagine this ladder filter and you um, take those center capacitors and put in two, and you can convince yourself that these two capacitors, when you split that capacitor in half, that the center point is ground, that it's a mirror function of one another. There'll be maybe plus biases on one side, minus biases on the other side, but down the center of these two capacitors will always be ground. So you can just get rid of them. You can just slice this thing in half and do the analysis on just on just one half of it. So here we've just sliced it, and we've also gone from doing a DC analysis to an AC analysis. Now, when you go to the AC analysis, you basically consider everything that's DC is ground. You just assume it's ground. It's not moving at all. So just make it ground, and the AC signal will think it's ground. And this is what you're. This is what you have left over. Um, so you have just a series of capacitors with buffer stages between each one of them. Okay, and so that's exactly what you want. And you say, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Your resistors are gone. You, you're missing your resistors. Um, well, at low current levels and AC analysis, you can uh, model a transistor as a small resistor. Um, and so basically the transistor becomes a resistor and an isolating element both at the same time. So it's actually a quite a quite clever scheme. So anyway, I'm not going to go into any more of this. It's got transconductance and everything in it. Um, but uh, you can go watch that video, and maybe maybe you'll become an expert. <laughs> um, it's a half-hour video. The guy talks for a half an hour about this filter, right? All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at going the next step, which is adding um, feedback to the filter and making it even fancier. All right. So um, I have added uh, the feedback path for the uh, resonance. Uh, to peak this filter. And uh, I think you can actually get it to feedback maybe even and uh, oscillate. But what you do is um, there's... So Moog never did the feedback the same way twice. <laughs> Every single product they build, the feedback mechanism is completely different. Sometimes it uses current amps. Sometimes it uses FET. Sometimes it uses instrumentation amps. Sometimes it uses... Uh, they just do it all over the map. So anyway... Um, I found it just a simple instrumentation amplifier is really all that's required here. So this is the most simple circuit I think I can come up with that basically duplicates the Moog circuit. It is a, a diode circuit with um, 
transistor is wired as diodes, and so everything sort of matches. Um, the Q1, Q2, Q6, Q10, those will all be um, from a uh, CA3046 uh, single, single chip uh, where all of the transistors are matched. So it's important that the the bottom two transistors are matched and the top two transistors are matched and that it doesn't too matter too much about the ones in the middle. And then you take the differential, you put them through an operational amplifier and uh, they come out and then you feed it back in on the other side and you can get it to peak. So now right now I have the uh, R10 adjusted for uh, 10K. Let's put it to 5K. Not much happened. Let's put it to 2K. Here you see that the um, starting to get a little bit of peaks out over on the other side. Let's go to 1500, peaking a little bit more. There we go. Now we're peaking. Let's go to 100. Let's let's let it go wacky. Yes. Yeah, and now we're getting really really strong resonance in in the circuit. So this seems to be working just fine. So I'm stepping it from. Um, in 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 the in the um, to shift the frequency, I'm stepping this uh, current source down here, this I one current source. All right, and if we take a look at my stepping, I'm stepping from 100, uh, 10, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, and 500 microamps. Now I'm going to step R ten. So let me uh, turn that on. And let's go ahead and run this analysis. So um, you can see for each each frequency, we can adjust the peaking. Um, so this filter seems to be working working really good. So I guess the next thing to do is to lay out some PC boards. Um, I don't want to hand wire all these things because there's too many uh, too many nodes. So I'm going to build a couple boards and have them sent out. So on the left here, I'm uh, going to build an official Moog circuit. Um, and on the left-hand side, I'm starting to build a, a diode circuit. So I'll, I'll have two of those. I found some libraries that included the uh, CA3080 um, transconductance amplifier. And I also found that same... Uh, library had the CA3046 uh, transistor package. So um, the bottom long tail pair down here is part of that. And then the upper two, so you get five in, the, in that package. You get one pair and then you get three separate resist, uh, transistors. So I'm going to use those two at the top. So the two at the top and the two at the bottom will be nice and matched. It'll be an extra one I'm not using. Maybe I'll use it for something else. But um, And the same over here, you're going to match the top and the bottom. So I'll have two of those um, CA3046s. Uh, and if we go to look at, um, this is all in process, of course. Uh, if we look at uh, the board, uh, this is what uh, the filter would look like. Here are the stack of uh, ladder here. Uh, and uh, I have the 3046 up at the top. And then the uh, the, the, the string. So there's a uh, string of resistors over here. It's a 4.7K and then all the rest are 1Ks. So it takes your 15 volts and it just creates a big uh, uh diode, uh, I mean, a resistance ladder that just creates a whole bunch of intermediary voltages that keeps each diode biased such that it can't talk to the next one. Um, so the uh, there's a string right here of all of those um, resistors and then a couple of things. Anyway, I laid out this part just to see how big it will be. Um, unfortunately, Eagle limits me to... Uh, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. I can't make boards bigger than that. And I'm not willing to go out and buy a $400, $500 license for just one year. 
Um, I could use uh, KiCad. Yes, 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 I could do that. But I hate that program. I really do hate that program. Um, uh, maybe I'll have to buy the bullet someday. But um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, have to uh, lay out this other section here while you're watching. I'll also do that. Just move this over onto the board. So um, I've also put in a ground plane. So all of this will be on a ground plane. Um, should be pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to have to do though, is I'm because I'm limited by 100 by 100 millimeter boards, uh, I'm going to have to break up my synthesizer into maybe a, a bunch of oscillators, a bunch of envelope generators, a, um, a bunch of uh, filters. Um, <laughs> I'm almost having to do, do a Euro rack myself, but... Uh, I eventually want to come down to one design that I kind of like and see if I can't smash it all onto one board, maybe a surface mount and things like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll be fun to uh, be fun to try this thing out and experiment with it. Um, if not just for the filters, uh, I think just this one board here. I think I'm going to put fil three filters on it. Um, I found this is the original Moog. This is the uh, kind of the Roland uh, one. And then uh, there's another one that some guy on, on YouTube uh, not YouTube, but one of the um, DIY boards posted, and it's really quite clever. It's all single ended. There's there's not a ladder. It's all single ended, but it's differential at the same time. So it's really super cool. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the board as well. See how it see how it works out. But uh, yeah, I think this will be the first board to go out. Play with the filter, and uh, go from there. <laughs> 